Hello, my name is Ian Farneth, and I am a sales engineer at Renvu Solar Distribution, and I'm going to show you how to make a ground mount PV system with the Solar Kit Guide. Um, I'm going to go over just a few uh, different aspects that come up a lot. Uh, one is uh, which racking company should you go with, the other is how do I know it's going to work for my location, and uh, what inverter should I use, and then also like, you know, do I need a structural engineering stamp for the system or not. Um, so just to get started, let's uh, go ahead and choose full system. Um, right off the bat, I'm going to choose string inverters. That, that answers that third question there. Um, the reason I'm choosing string inverters is because when you do a ground mount system, all the panels are facing the same direction. Um, unlike a roof top, which might have you know two or three different arrays that are facing different angles towards the sun and uh, messing up your string inverter string, right? Um, microinverters are perfect for that situation, so are optimizers, but uh, string inverters fall short. Um, the other thing is that rooftop generally, now you have to follow rapid shutdown for safety, right? Um, that isn't the case for ground mount. You don't really need rapid shutdown for that. Um, depends on your location, but um, my understanding of the code is it isn't really required. Um, but if you're doing a ground mount, you can have the string inverter out of the array, it takes care of that. Um, and since all your panels are facing the same direction, there's no problems with the, the string, cal uh, the string uh, calculations or sizing or anything like that. So, uh, and finally, string inverters are lower cost. Um, so let's do that for now. I'm going to go with Seraphim 300s just because this is an example. Um, I'm, once you get to the racking section, uh, choose on the ground to do the ground mount design. Um, it's going to default to Unirac ground mount. Um, there's two options here. There is Unirac and Iron Ridge. Um, we always suggest Unirac at Renvu. Iron Ridge is another popular system that, that we support. Um, uh, right off the bat, I'm going to choose black clamps for, for the uh, panel. Um, but what, what's the difference here between Unirac and Iron Ridge? Unirac is a uh, two-row portrait system. Uh, it can go from 2 by 4 to 2 by 30 um, as as the uh, options here. Iron Ridge, uh, it supports a system that is either a 3, 4, or 5 row by 18 uh, column array, um, and it'll be in landscape. So it's slightly different. Um, and the other thing is, uh, when you purchase Unirac from us, you'll have all of the equipment that you need. Um, when you purchase Iron Ridge, you do have to source Schedule 40 2-inch or 3-inch piping locally, right? Um, and that is uh, that can be a little bit pricey, and it, it depends on you know the, the price of steel and your location and everything. But um, that you know, I would I would leave that up to you to, to do that calculation to find that price. Um, but Unirac will cut the um, the complexity out of that equation and and just let you get a, a bottom dollar price right there basically um all right so let's let's just go with unirac for now let's do a uh, two array system um and then uh one array of i don't know two by eight and the other array of two by four let's let's just do that that's that looks like a good array. you can see the two sizes here they they give you the um length and width uh, of, of that panel array there. Um, all right, so next step here that I would go to is the location settings. So we're in the state of California here at Mountain View, uh, at Renvu, we're in Mountain View. Um, and you might ask yourself, what's the tilt angle? Uh, you know, what, what would be the best tilt angle for my location? Um, the, an easy way to answer that is to check a, uh, an, a calculator tool like um, PV Watts is a good one. You can find really quickly what your uh, location uh, would, would, which would be the best tilt angle for your location. Um, and you don't have to do all of the, you know, uh, standard solar calculations that, that bring up, uh, you know, azimuth and, and point of the sun and all that. So let's just do NREL real quick. Let's do that. Okay, so we're at PV watts, right? And 
so I, I already did this once, so I, it's defaulted to the Renju zip code, um, but let's just go ahead and source that. We'll go over. Let's assume a four kilowatt array for both systems, just to see, this is just to find out which tilt angle is better. So the first one that's on here is 30. If you do 30, tilt degree 30, you get a 6,676 kilowatt hour per year uh, system, right? So let's remember that, 6,600. Now I'll do 20. Okay, 6,500. So that means 30 is, is more optimal for our location, right? And generally when you're further south, uh, 20 will be better, right? Um, and when you're further north, 30 will be better. So, I mean, right, it seems like we're kind of in the middle here, but uh, 30 seems like a good option. So let's leave it at 30. Um, and then we're going to assume, because we're in Mountain View, it's an urban and wooded area, uh, we could go ahead and bump this up to open terrain, which would be a little stronger if we wanted, um, but you don't need to to save some money. Um, but, I mean, you know, I, I like to I like to you know err on the side of caution here. Um, the other thing is wind speed. You know, what do we choose here? And snow load, it's like, I don't I don't really know what the snow load is for my area. That's, that's a good question. So there's two things we can do here. Um, the... One, one thing is you can check with your local AHJ to see what wind exposure, wind speed, and snow loads they require for your area, or they suggest. Um, you can check with ASHRAE, you can check with other structural engineers, um, but uh, an easy way is to check with UNRAC and find your certification letter. California has one, not all states have them, but you can, you can guess and check based on your location. Um, and obviously it'd be a good idea to check with UNRAC if you're doing that. Um, but what UNRAC does is they have a pre-engineered uh, system, the, the UNRAC ground fixed tilt. And by pre-engineered, I mean they've already had structural engineers take a look at this system for the state of California and other states to see if this system will work uh, and, and hold up structurally, right? And uh, they just want you to follow this design guide that they've created. Um, so we get to this page, we check out California. I'm, I'm going to, I'm saying, you know, Mountain View is about here, right? Somewhere around here. Um, and then I look up my area. It looks like you need to assume about 10 PSF snow and 110 miles per hour wind. So that's, that, you know, this is a pretty good assumption here. If you want to do the hand calculations for the system, we could go ahead and go to the table for the 30 degree system and find our, uh, system. So, you know, we could do exposure C. Uh, driven concrete and, and we're, we have a concrete system um, and then you can choose the, uh, the array size so the 2 by 4 or 2 by 8 you know so you, you see the number of piles here so it should add up to 5 um, okay so we have the weather conditions here we're gonna go ahead and go up to 10 there because it suggested it and it's already given us 5 for for our array so that's good um, okay, so we have our general uh, system set up here. So now we're going to hit next to move this along. We already went over the reasoning for the string inverter. Um, because we have two arrays, we can try to, you know, figure out what's going to be the best combination of inverters for this system. Um, but right off the bat, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and choose two inverters, one 3.8, one for three. Um, and you know we could figure it out a little bit later. Maybe maybe it's better to do one inverter and then you know maybe the gap between them isn't that large, so we can we can figure out what what that's going to be. Um, all right, let's see. I'm assume the temperature and add modern. Yeah, and I'm going to go for the full permitting package. Um, again, uh, something to note: the system has a pre-engineered stamp, right? Um, and that's going to be put onto the permitting package at, at the end uh, so that your AHJ can see that this system has been engineered, right? And that we're following the design guides. The, the engineers will look at the uh, location that this is going in and make sure that this design guide is followed. Um, but if your AHJ says that they want a site-specific engineering stamp for this uh, ground mount, that means they they want an engineer to actually go through the calculations by hand for your location. And that means that uh, basically you need to get a uh, structural engineer for your state to uh, stamp your drawings, right? And that would happen after you get the full permitting package. 
so that's something we can offer. Um, you know, the prices vary based on the size of the system, but you know, they start at 250. Um, and you know, we can get a structural engineer for the state of California to stamp the drawings for this particular system, but it's not always required. So it's, it's a good idea to go ahead and, you know, submit a permit package without the stamp, um, or, you know, check with your HJ first to see if they need it. Um, but you know, sometimes they're a little bit surprised by the UNRAC pre-engineered system. So, you know, um, it's a good idea to, to show them that, you know, this, this has already been structurally engineered. Um, and I might not need to, you know, pay an extra 250 for a site specific stamp. Um, you know, if you have any thoughts on that, feel free to, you know, comment below or, or talk to us. So I'm going to finish this and we get our PV system here. Um, again, if we want to edit it, we have to just go ahead and submit this and then we can open it up on our project section and, uh, you know, play around with the design a little bit. See if maybe we don't need so much stuff. Uh, we could get rid of some of the, uh, the, the, you know, wiring or, or, uh, other equipment that, that come up. Um, you know, maybe you have access elsewhere or something, but, uh, in general, this, this went over the system pretty quickly. Uh, you got a ground mount array. If, if you need to go over it and find any information on it, um, you can find a ton of documents and videos of the system components down here. If you choose racking, you can see the ground fix tilt equipment. Um, the installation guide is really good. Um, you can see here uh, a ton of information on how the system is put together, um, how everything goes, how you're going to, you know, um, have all this uh, get assembled. It's a great idea to go through this before you make a purchase just to make sure that, you know, th this really makes sense for your location. I mean, um, we did just create this in about five minutes, but, you know, there's a few other aspects that are, you know, made us, uh, some assumptions were made, right? Like, you know, is there any tilt in this system? Is there, uh, is there any, um, you know, is there a slope that you're dealing with, um, you know, on, on your, uh, on your property there, right? Um, questions like this, these are great questions to come in with before, uh, making a purchase. And, uh, you know, this is something that if you wanted a site specific, uh, structural engineer to take a look at, they, this is, you know, perfect, right? Um, so, you know, give us a call if you have any questions about that. If you're confident that the system will work for you, uh, we're, we're fairly confident that, you know, all this equipment is, uh, is what you need for, for the array that we set up in the SKG. Um, so, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thanks for watching.